Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I rig my DD Hammocks 3 meter by 3 meter tarp. Now there are lots of different ways to rig a tarp, there are lots of different knots you can use, some people prefer one method over another. This is just the way that I found that works best for me in most environments around the world. So I'm going to run through it in two parts. Part one is going to be just me taking the tarp out of the bag, rigging it between two trees, getting it all tensioned out and putting it away again in reverse back into the bag. In part two of the video we're going to look at some of the specifics of the method that I use. So a tension knot at one end of the ridge line and a releasable knot at the other, two prussics to hang the tarp from that ridge line and a few other small adjustments you can make. Now this video isn't definitive, there are lots of other things that we could talk about here, lots of configurations, rigging a tarp from two trekking poles or where you've only got one tree, rigging it straight on the ground between two boulders, there's a lot more we could cover. But in these two videos I want to run just through the basics of rigging a tarp like this with some methods that I found that work for me. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it. So I've added to the tarp kit a length of five meter I think it's five millimeter climbing accessory cord or thereabouts. Uh, the whole thing normally lives somewhere at the top of my rucksack. It's one of the first things to uh, come out of my bag when I'm coming to set up camp and it's normally one of the last things to go away. This means that I've always got a dry place to set up my kit, uh, even in the pouring rain, so that I can get myself a dry space to just work out what I'm going to do next. Uh, there I'm tying a release knot, uh, in this case it's a releasable bowline, um, but any kind of knot that you can tie securely and uh, can release uh, whilst under tension will do. Um, now I'm running down to the other end. Um, I work out the distance between trees, they're about three and a half of my big paces um, is about right for me. but just experiment for yourselves. Uh, at this end I'm putting in a tension hitch so here it's just wrapping the loose end of the cord over the main line uh, making a loop and pulling back and then using the pulley effect there to take a, some of the tension out of the line and do it again and every time you do this I normally make take about an inch to two inches uh, out of the slack that's in the ridge line so normally at least three passes uh, gives me the tension I need and then I just finish it off with any knot here will do. I just wrap it around three times and then pull it back through itself uh, like a, it's a fisherman's knot. Um, but as you've got a release knot at the other end on the right hand side of the screen as you see, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a releasable knot at one end and a tension knot at the other, everything's going to be fine. So you notice I've just pull the drawstring bag off the hammock there and hang it up off the tr on the tree. Uh, this keeps all my kit off the ground and make sure that I can actually find it, which is really important if you're doing this in the dark. Uh, I've got one of the guy lines for the tarp wrapped around it uh, to keep it all together. So the tarp's hanging on two classic prussics. Uh, they're lengths of cord, loops of cord that are wrapped around the main ridge line in such a way that uh, when you slide them along, they slide easily, but when you put tension on them, they lock in place. This is a really useful way of putting uh, things on a fixed line like this. Uh, it works really well with tarps. You can also use it with hammocks and uh, a few other things. Uh, it comes from mountaineering. It's a climbing knot. Uh, it's used for ascending ropes or uh, providing backups on belays and that kind of thing, but it does work really well with tarps here. So by doing that, I can put quite a bit of tension as you can see there, I'm only hanging the tarp from the loops that are at either end of the tarp. Uh, the ridge line isn't threaded through the uh, loops in the middle. Uh, I find I don't need that. Um, it also gives me flexibility. It means I can rig the ridge line and then change the configuration of the tarp afterwards. But again, that's something you, you can experiment with. So now the ridge, the guy line that was wrapped around the whole tarp, I'm just looking for that. and. That's the first guy line that goes out. Uh, I try and keep all my guy lines as long as I can um, when I put them away. So I just slide the adjuster up to halfway along the guy line when ready to put the peg in. Um, this gives me plenty of uh, line to tidy things up with, but also means that I can I can tension it if I need to. So 
one peg going in there, really stony soil up here in our forest. This is our, one of our uh, classroom sites uh, up in one of our forests in northeast Wales where we run a lot of our courses. So if you're familiar with our courses and our site there, you'll know how many stones are in the soil there. So just get the first peg in um, and now you're going to watch a couple of minutes of me putting pegs in. So rather than talk about that, I'm going to talk about the tarp that I'm using, which is the DD Hammocks 3 meter by 3 meter. It's not the lightest tarp on the market. It's It's got plenty of tabs on it. It's uh, nice and strong. It's got really good coverage. Uh, one of these uh, is good for two people and a dog and all their kit, as we found quite a few times on our trips. Um, the equipment that comes with it is a couple of or a few tent pegs, uh, four guy lines, and the tarp itself. I've added the ridge line, the prussics, and the uh, mayon connectors that are connecting the prussics to the tarp uh, to it. But other than that, it's pretty much stock as it comes from DD Hammocks. Um, big fan of these tarps. As I said, there are lighter ones on the market and ones with slightly more, uh, slightly better adjustment and uh, different ways of doing things, but. This is one of the tarps that I started with, and we actually use them in the company now as well on our courses. So it's something that, yeah, I do I do quite like. But uh, whatever tarp, whatever sheet of plastic you've got that uh, you're using to create your shelter, this system should still work with it. Uh, even if it's one of those uh, polyester woven sort of builders type tarps with the metal eyelets, uh, you can still hang it from a ridge line this way. Um, it just maybe won't last as long or um, might be a bit uh, more susceptible to tearing, that kind of thing. So back to the guy lines. When I'm putting the guy lines out, I try and work, start in one corner and then work around the tarp. Um, or at least have a system of doing it so I make sure that I uh, get everything tensioned out nicely. You can start to see the shape of the tarp coming up now. Um, I'm rigging this in the most simple way that you can, which is uh, completely off the ground, uh, symmetrical layout, it's like a big flying V. Um, nothing's touching the ground other than the guy lines, so it gives me lots of protection from the rain above. Uh, sheds the rain quite nicely, but there's not much protection from wind or uh, breezes or anything like that. So if we were going somewhere where wind was an issue, I'd either need to, to uh, drop these ends and the sides uh, to the ground and peg through them, or I would have to uh, put it in different configuration or even uh, use some material from the forest, some branches, some leaves, something like that to uh, make a, a wall at one end or in two places just to keep the, the airflow off, off us and help maintain some heat under the shelter. Um, and then this being the UK, um, we do sometimes, the rain doesn't always fall straight down. We often get 45 degree rain. So there we go. That's just, that's the tarp pretty much rigged. Um, I'm just going around checking the guy lines now. Uh, adjusting them. I'm just trying to get rid of that sort of crease you can see in the uh, lower left hand uh, side of the tarp as you can see it. But that's pretty taut now um, as I'm about to show you. There we go. Enough to bounce an acorn off anyway. So there you go. Nice and easy. Seven minutes. So now this is the other side of things. This is me uh, de-rigging the whole thing. So I've started uh, with one peg there already. Uh, as you can see from the time code, this is going to take about the same time as it did to put it up. Uh, I actually think it's more important to be uh, systematic and um, to do things in a set order when you're putting things away rather than when you're putting it up because how tidily you put it away, uh, that is the main fact for how easy it is to put it up when you get it out of the bag again next time. And I always go through this thing of I either curse or, or or praise previous me. If previous me was lazy and just threw it into the bag, I don't care at the time, but in a day, a week, a month, when I can next get the tarp out of the bag, I curse previous me because I was lazy and yeah, it's, uh, it's not a good habit to get into. So I always try and be thorough and systematic when I'm putting my gear away, because uh, at least it should be there, ready to use properly the next time. So I'm just going around, uh, wrapping up all these uh, guy lines and the cord, um, putting the pegs away. Again, the bag's still hanging from the tree from where I had it. Uh, nice and easy, yeah, just knocking some of the soil off the pegs so 
that I don't end up with um, a big damp lumps of soil that are hard to dry out in the bottom of the bag and prevents mold and things forming on the tarp when it's in storage. Uh, it's also just a good habit to get into. Uh, the pegs I'm using are the uh, a titanium sort of their uh, Y shape profile. Uh, they're really good for stony soil but really lightweight. So again you can see the Prusik system there works really well. Uh, it's nice and easy to slide. Just slide it back to somewhere on the middle line of the tarp. Pull the center tab of the tarp and I just fold it like so. It's like folding a big bed sheet now. Um, you don't have to be really neat and tidy uh, doing this. In fact it's actually better if you're not. And if you're in the military or ex-military this it, this might not sit well with you but things don't need to be uh, folded down to a nice neat crease every single time you're doing it particularly with waterproof items because they're often the laminate layer where there's a fabric layer and a waterproof layer um, and if you keep folding it in the same place time and time again it's the laminate's going to start to separate and you that's where the first leaks in your waterproof item are going to start so it's actually better to be slightly random and have a not have the creases in the same place every time. So now I'm just folding up the last uh, last few corners. I've tucked all the uh, hank to the wrapped up guy lines inside the tarp so they don't dangle out. And that last fourth guy line is just being wrapped around the outside, pulling it tight every couple of wraps. Uh, just helps make a nice neat uh, package. Um, so it's a nice tight bundle so that it fits in my bag without taking up too much space. Uh, so basically this is the same as putting it up it's just going in reverse um, everything's still hanging on the uh, on the ridge line there the ridge line is holding the same tension as it was before uh, just tucking the end of the guy line away and then I can get the drawstring bag yeah don't know why I'm faffing and fiddling there I thought, oh yeah so this is something um, that is difficult to sort of work out at times is where midway along the ridge line is. Every time I do it, I keep thinking I should put a little mark on it where the middle point is, but I never do. Uh, so this is, yeah, just putting it back into the bag and then I can loosely pull that drawstring up and have that as a nice neat package hanging from the tarp. Again, none of my kit is on the ground where it could get lost or in countries where the wildlife isn't as friendly as it is here in the UK. Um, I might end up putting my hand somewhere where I don't want it to be, so under a pile of leaves and uh, encounter a scorpion or something like that. So it's trying to keep all my loose items off the ground apart from the, the odd bit of cordage there. So quick release knot undone and then just undoing the tension knot now. Nice and easy. Um, I love this climbing accessory cord. It stays fairly stiff, it's easy to use, um, and it's uh, that piece I'm using there, I think it's about eight or nine years old and it's still going strong. It's still not showing any signs of age really. Um, now the last thing I'm doing is just uh, moving those two prussics down to make them in the middle of that ridge line so that I know next time when I put it up, the whole bundle of the tarp and everything will be in the middle of the ridge line so it doesn't matter which end I pick up, it's still going to be more or less in the middle. So just wrapping the ridge line up in the same way that I did with the uh, guy lines, um, just whichever way you can use to uh, keep your cordage and your guy lines or your ridge line nice and tidy. Um, it just means you don't have that Christmas tree lights effect next time you get out of the bag and it's like trying to, it's <laughs> like trying to dr deal with drunk spaghetti. Um, yeah, just keeps everything nice and neat and tidy. Uh, and that's a big thing for me in all the my care of outdoor kits and my outdoor skills is knowing the times when you need to be precise and where being tidy and doing things in a very set way is useful and the times when just as long as you achieve it then it doesn't matter so that's it everything put away so just under six minutes put it away and as you can see i'm not really brushing there i'm doing things very slowly for the camera and there you have it nice small package so that was part one. In part two, we're going to look at some of the techniques that I use there and some of the knots in a little bit more detail. So if you want to go and watch part two, you can do so by following this link here.